today, Kevin Frankie filed for divorce from his wife, Ruby Frankie. Today, November 29th, Kevin Frankie filed in the state of Utah for divorce as we understand it. And it was filed actually um, in the fourth district court. Kevin Frank has officially filed for divorce against his wife, Ruby Frank, after almost one year of separation. I don't think anyone has had enough of 2023 than Ruby. She's literally the perfect example from grace to grass. Cause who would have thought Ruby would fall this hard? On top of that, Kevin is also taking Jody Hiddlebrandt down, you guys. This has gotten super messy. Without wasting a second, let's get right into it. After spending a better part of her life pretending to have a super happy family with fake smiles and matching outfits, curtains have closed for Ruby Frank. And no, she has neither received a standard innovation nor big claps because her performance was super disturbing and disgusting. Turns out everyone is leaving Ruby's camp, including her husband, who was also her partner in crime, y'all. Not even their wedding vows can save the situation. Ruby's life is now falling apart in a way she could have never expected. The moment Kevin saw Ruby being put behind bars, he literally said, huh, Ruby dear, I know I made a vow to you that wherever you go, I will go, but no. Prison ain't it, my darling. You'll have to this alone. And the, the petition for divorce is private, so we can't see a whole lot of it, but we do know that things were filed today here in the state of Utah. According to reliable news sources, the nitty gritty of the divorce has not yet been revealed, but some sections have been made available to the general public, which basically means the actual legal reason for the divorce hasn't been disclosed much. Well, of course we know the reason, only that most details about the matter are still private. However, going by tiny pieces available, it's super obvious that Kevin has decided to protect himself, as you will see as we go through it. However, going by what's currently available, it says, because this matter involves divorce, annulment, temporary separation, custody, parent time, child support, or paternity, the court makes the following orders. These orders apply to the petitioner and the respondent. The parties must not A, harass, intimidate, or disturb the peace of the other party by any means, including electronically. Let's just call it as it is, guys. Kevin is just telling Ruby, don't you call me or talk to me directly. If you have anything to say, contact my lawyer, you I mean, he's free while Ruby is locked up. How else was Ruby gonna disturb or harass him? There's also no way Ruby would reach him other electronically, and he has decided to close that channel too. Okay, moving on. The document also directs Ruby and Frank not to B, commit domestic violence or abuse against the other party or a child. At this point, Kevin is flat out mocking Ruby, y'all. Also notice how he's still claiming innocence on the ongoing child abuse case by sneaking in words like that none of the parties should commit any acts of violence against a child. Kevin is just trying to convince the world that he is a thoughtful parent who minds his kids, but it's too late for that, Kevin. We already know the truth. The next order of the divorce papers bans both Kevin and Ruby against C, using the other party's name, likeness, image, or identification to get credit, open an account for service, or obtain a service. This is the part where Ruby now has to drop Frank because the owner wants it back. Okay, she doesn't necessarily have to drop it, but basically she's being warned that it's the end of the road for her because her soon-to-be ex-husband doesn't want any official engagements between them. Oh, and that part about bank accounts, I'm pretty sure there isn't much left in their joint account. There's a high chance that they were almost done eating all the YouTube money they made by exploiting their children. Let me tell you guys, people have never rejoiced at someone else's downfall the way that they're celebrating this one. And I'll show you a couple of comments later, but for now, let's continue going through the document. Okay, on to the next point. D, they are both not allowed to cancel or interfere with telephone, utility, or other services used by the other party. Now, this is a bit sus, y'all. You know what? This is all Kevin's lawyer's idea. Yep, it looks like Ruby and Kevin still have a few leftover coins from their kids' YouTube money, and Kevin doesn't want Ruby to stop him from using it for his own personal expenses, like paying the phone bill or something. For someone who has spent pretty much all her life flexing her power over others, she she must be having breathing problems because the tables have turned and now she doesn't have control. Furthermore, this order will only work in Kevin's favor now that Ruby will be in jail for so long and Kevin will be out here finishing up everything they shared. This document only gets worse, y'all. It literally gets worse, especially for Ruby. E, none of them 
is allowed to cancel, modify, terminate, change the beneficiary, or allowed to lapse for voluntary non-payment of premiums without the written consent of the other party or pursuant to further order of the court. Any policy of one, health insurance, two, homeowners or rental insurance, three, automobile insurance, or four, life insurance. Ruby must get an equally good lawyer just like Kevin did because things are going to get messy here. It's obvious that Ruby will want to contest so many things in this divorce because she won't have equal freedom and privilege as Kevin, and yet Kevin will still have access to her money. On top of that, the document further states that F regarding the division of property, personal property, or debts, both parties are not allowed to make any moves like disposing or transferring such property to a third party unless there is written consent from the other person or when there's a court order. Here's where it gets interesting though. It says that even though they both cannot dispose or sell the stuff they own together, there will be instances when it will be allowed to provide for the necessities of life. What will stop Kevin from selling the family car to provide for the necessities of life? Now on to the next part of this crazy story, guys. Kevin is also going after Jody Hiddlebrand, Ruby's business partner who is now facing six counts of child abuse charges just like her fellow Ruby. Kevin is now petitioning the state of Utah to thoroughly vet people before giving licenses to therapists and life coaches. In simple terms, Kevin is just throwing shade towards Ruby and Jody's business connections where Jody and the mental health counselor, while Ruby Frank's title was certified fitness mental health trainer. These two delusional women used to give the most outrageous and unreasonable parenting advice. One way to know if your child is managing what is on their plates is to ask, is my child showing up cheerful? Is my child showing up uh, responsible? Is my child available if I ask her to do something like, hey, could you wash up the dishes for me? Hey, would you mind taking out the garbage? Um, are they available to say, yeah, sure, uh-huh. Or are they pushing back? I don't have time, I can't do that. That tells you they're not managing because someone who's managing has time and space and motive for serving those around. You go into um, loving yourself, but you're not principled about it you're going to slip, you're going to hurt yourself. That's where it goes into the selfishness. You have to have the principles with the soul in order for it to be self-love. Besides parenting, the two business partners would also address topics such as relationships, self-improvement, basically styling themselves as life coaches. Ruby and Jody even offered classes to help parents deal with their children. Hmm. I love anger only when it's used in truth, only in truth. And obviously you can have very clear, motivating anger inside truth. And unfortunately, most of us don't know how to do that. That when we feel anger, it predominantly goes into this place of distortion. After everything we've seen and heard from people who survived Jody, like her niece, Jessie Hiddlebrandt, we can now understand why she would justify that anger is a good thing. By the way, guys, the most mind blowing thing here is that Jody was busy dishing out wisdom, yet her license as a therapist and mental health counselor had been canceled somewhere in 2011 when she one day discussed one of her male clients' personal struggles in church without the client's consent. Jody should have taken this as a clue to either leave the profession for good or change her ways and start acting like a normal human being. But she was too self-absorbed and believed her problematic therapy styles were just okay. Jody is just a psychopath, y'all. Let's call it as it is. To add to that, it has now been public that the Mormon church will still approve of her as a therapist and referred church members to her, which would explain why she still got clients even after her license had been taken away. Ruby, on the other hand has more cases to answer because while she presented herself as a certified mental health trainer, it now turns out that the information is far from the truth. Which brings us to the next part of this drama, y'all, which explains why Kevin is asking for this law to be enforced in Utah. Other than the harsh jabs he has thrown at Ruby in the divorce document, he has added a cherry on top by literally telling the state that she was not even a qualified mental health trainer like she claimed. Anyways, Kevin can pretend all he wants about being 
being at the forefront of fighting quack therapists and life coaches, but he can't fool anyone right now. He's just trying to gather public attention and pity. But on a very serious note, y'all, can we talk about Kevin? No, seriously. Is he getting away with mistreating those kids? The fact that he hasn't been arrested is beyond me. He is out here acting like a hero when it's a well-known fact that he was just as bad of a parent as Ruby. There are literally thousands of videos of Kevin present and even joining Ruby in disciplining their kids. Like the time that they took Chad's bed away for six months and made him sleep on a beanbag. And then there was the time that he personally took away the kids' homework and made them pay or do extra house chores to get their homework back. There are also countless times when both Ruby and Kevin made the kids sleep on bathroom floors, especially when they were sick, saying it would be easier to reach the toilet bowl in case they wanted to throw up. People just couldn't stomach the kind of parents they were and called them out on so many occasions. And so for years, people tried to get the police and CPS involved in this case. There was even an online petition at one point begging the authorities to rescue those kids, but guess what? Ruby and Kevin somehow managed to slip through the cracks, even making a video where they basically laughed at all of us because they thought that they were untouchable. I was accused of abuse. abuse. <laughs> it's like, it's abuse to expect your children to be responsible. To grow up and be uh, productive adults. Kevin and Ruby even made decisions together regarding punishing the kids. Like the one time that they sent Chad away in the wilderness. It was also around that time that CPS went over to the house to check on the well-being of the kids. And when he was asked why they sent their child in the middle of nowhere against the child's will, his response was, as for Chad, he's in a wonderful place right now with a good group of friends and a healthy outlook on life where he holds high standards and high boundaries. Then he added, he's definitely not chained in our basement. Chained in the basement? This right here proves that chaining kids in the basement was something Ruby and Frank would do so often. Because how can such a piece of information just come out of nowhere? For someone who made money from mistreating his kids for years, either Kevin just has a shit ton of audacity, or he's yet another psychopath just like Ruby and Jody if he thinks he's actually innocent. I don't know about y'all, but I believe Kevin has only managed to stay out of jail this whole time because he has a lawyer. You see, the moment Ruby was arrested, Kevin and his lawyer dropped everything and focused on making Kevin looked innocent. They'd hop from one media house to another trying to convince the public that Kevin was innocent and their strongest argument was that Kevin wasn't in the house when the mistreatments were happening. However, tell me why Kevin's lawyer suddenly couldn't comment when asked about Kevin's actions and involvement when he was still at home. One of the allegations is that the kid, Chad, wasn't allowed to sleep in a bed for seven months. Why did he think that was okay? I, I, I can't comment on that. I have a duty to my client, to the court, not to comment on that question. So now suddenly he has a duty to protect his client. I mean, come on, he was an active participant. The fact that he's painting himself as a good parent is actually insulting to his own kids because they experienced his harshness firsthand and when he was the one who was supposed to protect them. Anyways, we all know that he was involved and no amount of cover-up can convince people otherwise. So many people are actually still shocked that almost three months after Ruby's arrest, Kevin is still roaming the streets as a free man and and now he's the one calling on Utah to do better when licensing life coaches and therapists. Sometimes reality is stranger than fiction, y'all. Uh, the horse is out of the barn, all right? Your client let the mother put the kids' lives and all the discipline all over the place on YouTube. So that decision was just fine when they were monetizing it. Now all of a sudden they want standards and they want us to be careful about the kids. The careful question here goes to whether or not they were careful with the kids. Uh, did your husband have a role in the behavior that's now being charged? Absolutely not. How? When he's the father and he was in the house, how did he not know and not do anything about it? Um, mom had the kids for the summer and uh, uh, went out of the county with the kids. And, and if he had known of or thought there was abuse going on, he would have been all over it. So is your He's suggestion never... that everything that has been charged happened after he left? Correct. So none of the things Correct. that uh, the mother has been charged with happened when he was in the house? That's correct. It happened in a, in a house that was uh, a couple of hundred miles away from 
where Mr. Frankie, Frankie was. I know he wants us to believe he had no part in the latest parenting tragedy, but he supported withholding food as punishment. But Kevin wanted his daughter charged with burglary. They're both nuts, those poor children. He needs to petition his church to stop recommending counseling by unsafe clergy and counselors. I love how enablers never think that they are part of the problem. So back to Ruby, for someone who for a very long time believed she had it together, Ruby Frank is now left disgraced, ashamed, and alone. Because her life is far from what she had pictured and so many have pointed it out. I watched this lady for years and all her siblings, I was in on the gossip boards back then and we pointed out all the crazy Ruby stuff. But never in my wildest dreams did I expect it to play out like this. Like I knew she was nutty and would make it on the show's world's strictest parents, but this is so beyond horrific. The stark contrast between her crimes and the amazing do-it-all supermom persona she portrayed is really fascinating. She wanted to be YouTube famous and a top Mormon influencer. Now she'll be remembered as some lunatic who got sucked into a crazy cult and tied up her kids. Just sad. I hope the kids find safety and healing far away from cameras. Also guys, is it just me or is Kevin doing the most to distance himself from his once upon a time love of his life? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section guys and keep it here because y'all, I'll keep you posted on any new developments to the eight passengers case. Thanks for watching.